What is going on? Charles Botenston here. Today we're going to be talking about digital minimalism. It's going to be another book review. We have our iPad down here, got our little Apple pen. Before we get into this, this has been just an absolute, this is my preamble before we get into the book, is that this has been a, a very big portion of my life. It's just studying and understanding what all of this means to humans that have never dealt with this. I'm talking about social media, email, texting, calling, it, how it affects us, obviously mentally, how it affects us in dating, how it affects us in our health, not only mental health, but physical health, sitting down. You know, I was at the gym the other day, I, I think I gave this example, and this guy was, he, he had a tweaked nerve and he wasn't able to go into the gym class that I was going into. I was like, dude, what's going on? He's like, well, you know, I think it came from just sitting down all day. The dude's 43, 44 years old, and he, he's out for three weeks for a tweaked nerve because he sits down all day long in front of a computer. I'm standing up right now, I have a standing desk. It's very expensive, it's the one that actually goes up and down. You can get ones that you could just you know go like this, mine is electronic. However, why spend, I'm spending, I spent $1,000 on this desk. Sounds like a lot, it is a lot, it's a desk. But the thing is to me, what's a thousand dollars if I have this for say six, seven years, how much longevity am I actually adding to my life? Or in his case, this guy that I'm talking to, he has a tweak nerve, he's out for three weeks. Three weeks, he's 43, I'm 33. So the way that I think about it is, what's a thousand dollars if it's going to my health, if it's going to be my benefit? And with, obviously that's physical health. But when we're talking about digital minimalism, this is everything. This is everything. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna continue the preamble with just a couple of thoughts. I'm obsessed with how it's affecting not only young kids, especially young girls, but it's how, how is it affecting guys? Because men need that, that nurturing. You know, a lot of guys are gonna disagree. They, they need that nurturing and then women, you know, there's not a lot of happy women that just, some are but they grow older and if they're by themselves, there's no partner to share your life with, men, man or woman. They're growing older by themselves. I don't see it as a happy life. And a lot of this is covered in the book. You're not as happy when you're surrounded by screens. Right now, I'm surrounded by screens. I have two computer monitors. I have an iPad right here, okay? I practice digital minimalism as much as I can. And I'm gonna talk about some things that I do. And the reason that I'm, I'm obsessed with this is, is twofold. Number one is, let's just talk about young girls. They are social creatures more than guys. And, and the thing is, social creatures back in the day, it was person to person. And then it became email to email. Then it became texting. And now it's all, it could be even anonymous online. You know, oh, uh, Debbie is blah, blah, blah. And the amount of anxiety and just depression that younger girls are going through is through the roof. On the other side, you have males that are just, they, they have lost their way. You know, David Data talks about this in the way of the superior man is that every man has a calling. Every man has a, has a, has a being, has a, has a life force that they, they need to be going down their path of life that they just insert other people into their life. They don't go down maneuvering around based on what other people say. They have their path and then they insert a spouse. They insert kids into it. They insert their friends into it. They don't say, oh, my spouse wants to do this. Oh, my kids want to do this. I'm not talking about just ignoring them, but you have your, your, your passion, your ideas, and your, your actual calling, that could be writing, that could be, it could be any kind of creative work. So let's just go into this really quick. So first, the first part of the book that Kel Newport, first of all, is a very esteemed, established author. He wrote Deep Work, and he also wrote So Good They Can't Ignore You. Highly recommend both of those books. He graduated, I think, from Harvard or MIT, one of those Boston just powerhouse schools. The guy's like 30-something years old, and he's already had three best-selling books. He's working on his fourth right now. He's, he's an absolute just monster when it comes to ideas. And I'll give you this, is that he's a practitioner of it. He's not one of these guys that says, hey, listen, you should do this with your health, but you look at them and you're like, dude, you're not even practicing this. Or they put out a book on social media or on email or on networking or on sales or on real estate, and they're not even crushing it in any of those. It's just, they're not actually practicing what they're pe preaching. He's never joined a social media network. He is 100% into deep work, and he's like a hermit to other people, but in fact, he's actually doing what he loves. He, he's, he's creating his passion, and he's, his mind is so overwhelmed with free ideas and just decluttered because he's actually practicing. So let's go into this. Number one is the arms race. 
So obviously you have Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. How much money do you have behind these companies? Billions and billions and billions of dollars. There are people that are brought on that are consultants and they are just saying, okay, people that wanna go on to Instagram, why do they keep on going on? Number one is you could see how you are in the world, your status, your status is how many followers you have. You go on to Instagram, there's always gonna be something new on the feed. There's gonna be a new story up at the top. You're also gonna go down and say, oh, someone liked my photo, someone just started following me, which is a red bubble. Guess what that is? That's feel good hormones. That's also unpredictable. When I go there, there's gonna be something new. That's all Instagram and Facebook. And essentially right there, you're, you're talking about two companies that are making their money not on monthly subscriptions, okay? So what he talks about in here is there's two types of models, okay? The first model is you pay $10 a month, $15 a month, there's no advertising, or if there is advertising, it's very small, but they put out quality content and they say that, because if a company is charging you $10, $15 a month and they're not putting out quality com content, say Netflix, you're not gonna use their, you're not gonna use their service anymore because they don't have any ads. You're paying them. Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, they have to put, they have to have you on their service to make money. Okay, because they're not getting paid unless you're using their service or their platform. So they have to make it good. They have to make it for you to continue returning, number one, and number two is to stay on as long as possible. Digital arms race, decluttering. So obviously a lot of people say, okay, what do I need to do? How do I actually get this out of my life? You know, he goes into the 30 day rule. The 30 day rule means that you completely just get off of everything and then you slowly add things back. A lot of people, they go off of everything and then they re-download. He goes, don't do that. That's kind of like an alcoholic that they say, for 30 days don't drink, but you can drink as much as you can afterwards. It's going to a drug, a drug addict. Hey, listen, put down the heroin, but after 30 days you can take it back up. It's the exact same thing what a lot of people do. I go on this, I go on this 30 day binge. He goes, no, go on a 30 day binge and then slowly add in one at a time, okay? It's a good idea, but that's kind of just going cold turkey. My idea is, or at least the approach that I took was, okay, I went cold turkey after, this is the way that I do it, is see where you're spending your time. Obviously, if you have an iPhone, you can see screen time and it shows how much time you actually open up each app on screen, on screen time, which is in iOS. And essentially, this is the best way to do it, is you take that app and then you move it to the second page. Okay, if you have a lot of apps on the second page of your phone, then you have to put it into a folder on the second page. In other words, when you open your phone, it cannot be on your home screen, okay? And it cannot be in a folder where you can see the icon. Okay, so when you open your phone, you actually have to search for it, okay? So you're automatically gonna have to search for it and you're gonna have to get your fix that way, okay? Once you, once you do that, then you move it further on to another page, the third page. It's gonna still be in a folder. So in other words, you're moving it, moving it, moving it further away. You're, you're kind of taking the poison drip and you're getting it less and less and less and less until you get to the point like me where I just, you just start questioning, why am I going on this? Because this is the thing, most people go on it for one of three reasons. They're bored, they're waiting for something, or they need that, that hit, okay? They're bored, you know, they're sitting at work, they have nothing to do, so instead of getting cookies or coffee or going to the bathroom or getting water, they go on Instagram. Number two is they are waiting for, I don't know, a friend or whatever, and they go on, which is sort of being bored. And the third, which is, yeah, okay, I need that rush, I need that, you know, that hit, but essentially it comes down to something we're gonna talk about right here, which is silence. It's also gonna be being alone and being uncomfortable. So I essentially got to the point where I actually deleted it, okay? I deleted all the apps, I still have the account, and then the way that I actually add to it is, this is, you obviously don't have to go here, but this is called, this is my website, um, I don't know how that came up, but bpi.live slash social, and that's essentially, it's, it's, there's other, you know, there's uh, TweetDeck, there's Later.com, there's all these things that you can add the, whatever image or whatever you want onto a platform if you wanna create content. So that's what I noticed is that there's two types of people, there's the creator and then there's a the consumer. I became more of a creator instead of a consumer because I was actually becoming a huge consumer. I was scrolling through. Consumer means that you don't really post a lot, you just consume a lot of content. Then you have creators like me that just create and they don't consume. So I became a creator, okay? Creator of story, stories, creator of posts. 
So I go to this website, bpi.live slash social. You, again, you can go to TweetDeck or later.com or anything else. And essentially you can post from your desktop to Instagram. So in other words, you don't even need to open up the app on your phone. That's the best thing because a lot of people say, okay, what am I going to use it for? I still need it as a tool. Okay. That's what I use it as. I don't, I don't use it as an outlet of boredom. I use it as a tool. And when you use it as a tool, essentially you're going to a website like this or later.com and you're still creating content, but you're not consuming it. And consuming it is where you get the rush and the dopamine hit and the likes and the friend requests and the messages and all those things. I also downloaded uh, IGDM, I think is it. IGDM is a desktop for Mac. It might be for PC as well, but essentially I can log in and get messages as well. So a lot of people, they'll reply to my stories or they'll reach out and, and some people say, what about DMs? Okay, great. Well, IGDM. You have to essentially, and I'll go into declutter more, which is you essentially have to set aside time to do anything, okay? I'll actually even go further into this, is that I also on my uh, desktop, I have something called Stay Focused. Stay Focused, I blocked from my desktop YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook from 8.30 to five o'clock. I can't even go on it on my desktop. It's not on my iPhone. And I can tell you right now, a lot of people freak out and they're like, well, what about my business? Do you, I literally just prospected for business 40 people. And I think, well, you know, I don't really check my email that much, but six of them already got back to me. Okay. So when people say, what about my business? I just prospected and got business. That's the way it should be. All these other tools right here, that's passive. That's marketing. Marketing versus sales. This is everything. Marketing versus sales. Marketing is passive. You're paying money. Sales is picking up the call, picking up your phone, reaching out for text, email, video text, writing a note. It doesn't matter. That is proactive. That's everything. That doesn't cost you anything to write an email. Marketing is expensive and Gary Vaynerchuk is pushing this. I completely disagree with it. And it's making girls depressed that are younger and it makes guys alone that are older. Okay. It's affecting both people, both genders. It's not good. So decluttering essentially means all screens, Netflix, if you want to watch a show, you have to go into your bathroom and put batteries into your remote because your remote is in your bathroom cabinet. In other words, don't have your remote right there. It's the same thing with an alcoholic. If you bring beer home, you're going to drink it. If you have your TV and the remote right there, you're going to sit on the couch and you're going to go on it. Okay. Go back to habits by, um, uh, what's his name? Great, great habits book. Oh man. Atomic Habits, and that's by Cal Newport, keeps on coming up my mind, but that's obviously for this book. Uh, James Clear, James Clear, okay? So that's, I don't know if that's gonna come up, but uh, look up James Clear, he has an incredible blog. Uh, James Clear, which is Atomic Habits, I've already talked about it a couple of times. So decluttering is the number one thing. A lot of people say, well, how am I gonna do it? You have to slowly drip yourself away, and then you move, um, then you delete it. Then you also just look at other areas that you're actually affecting yourself. So that's, uh, that's how you do it. Okay. Marketing versus sales practices. So this was a decent section right here, the, the first section, but the practices is really where I got a lot of the material and I highly recommend you really follow along on this. So number one is what we've missed in life is walking. Okay. So walking anywhere without any distractions, leave your phone at the office. Don't listen to music. Don't have anything in your hands. Just walk. This is extremely important. I can tell you right now, this has affected me the most. Okay. So number one is no distractions, no distractions. And the reason being is you need to have your mind piece together things that are going on in your life. If you are continuously hitting your mind with dopamine or any of the feel good hormones, EDSO, which EDSO is endorphin means dopamine, oxytocin, and serotonin. If you keep on hitting your brain with those, you're never going to be able to piece together the good and the bad. The, the, the problems in your life. And I'll just give you this example. I just wrote about it yesterday on Instagram, which is the reason that I started doing Ironmans is because I just didn't feel happy. It was just, it, it was like a lingering lostness. Okay. Earlier this year, I just said there, there was a lingering, uh, 
uh, unhappiness, and it was because I put myself in silence. Silence means my brain pieced together, hey dude, you're a little too comfortable at work, you're a little too comfortable in your physical activities, you're a little too comfortable in, in all of your habits, you need to change. So I said, how am I gonna change? And then I just, it, once you're open to change, you just start seeing things everywhere. But the problem is, a lot of people, they don't go for a walk, and they don't sit in silence. And this is the third one, which is, they don't want to be uncomfortable alone. When they're uncomfortable alone, guess what? They're gonna go into their mind, okay? They're gonna go, go into their thoughts. And when they go into their thoughts, they're afraid of their thoughts. They're afraid of their mind. They, they need something to continuously stimulate them. And if you continuously stimulate themselves, this is what's gonna happen is you, do, you don't do any of these three, and then guess what? 20 years later, what happened? What happened? Where'd it go? Nothing has changed. You're in the same job, you're still relationship, same body, everything else, because you haven't walked, you haven't sat in silence, you, ha you were not alone. Goes on, practices, don't like anything. So that's part of the consumer mentality, which is essentially don't like photos, don't, don't scroll through anything, don't comment anything. The reason being, it's like when you send an email, you're probably gonna get a reply. If you like a photo or, or send a comment or send a DM unnecessarily, and I'm not talking about like wishing someone a happy birthday, but he's saying that means you become part of the consumer mindset. He goes, become part of the creator mindset, which is you're there just to create, that's it. Okay, let other people consume, okay? So don't like, leisure. This is something that a lot of people, there's something I had never heard about it. It's called FIs. So financial freedom or financial freedom, financial independence. That's what it is. Financial independence. So essentially you make enough money that everything that you do is paid for by investments that you've saved up. Okay. You don't need a ton of money. He went through the math. You could do it within 10 to 15 years. You don't have to wait 30 years and be 65 years old and then start getting pension, retirement fund, blah, blah, blah. So leisure, this could be anything. This, this, this is, there are no screens and ideally it's in nature, okay? So that's nature, that in, and obviously this is something that is physical. This is picking up wood. This is going out to a summer house where there's no distractions, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no cell service. And you're essentially doing what you really, really like to do. And they go over a couple examples. Highly recommend you do this. This could be fixing a motorcycle. This could be, I don't know, uh, building out your garage. This could be keeping your lawn up to date or just that's your passion. In other words, that, that covers your silence, that covers when you're alone, you're not liking anything, and that's your leisure, that's your passion, that's something outside of all these screens that are in front of us. And lastly, let's just go over, join the resistance. Join the resistance means that there's a mounting amount of people. And he actually put out a, a, um, a PSA, you know, public service announcement. Hey, listen, I'm gonna be writing this book, and this is a couple years ago. If anyone wants to join me on a 30-day binge or 60-day binge, I forgot what it was from social media, you delete everything, and then I just wanna use how it's affected you and I'll write it into the book or at least just get some of the studies and some of the feedback on how it was deleting everything from your phone and obviously Netflix and TV and everything like that. And how many people signed up? 1,600. He thought there would be about 50. 1,600. There's a huge amount of people that are gonna be deep digging into this. There's a lot of people that are going back to dumb phones. So he talks about executives of even tech companies that are going back to dumb phones. They leave their smartphone at work and they have an emergency phone that just calls and texts. There's no apps, there's nothing else. They just go back to walking to work or being in silence, being alone, being uncomfortable. That's when your thoughts come in. That's when your ideas come in. Especially if you're a creative or a creator, you don't need anything that's in front of you. So I know this is a longer review, a lot longer. We're pushing uh, 18 minutes. Highly recommend the book, highly recommend uh, Cal Newport in general. Again, Deep Work, So Good They Can't Ignore You are his two other books. And of course, something like this, um, you know, look for other apps that can help you out. Um, you know, I already mentioned it, Screen Time will show you how many, how many hours you spend on each app. Um, post on, say, bpi.live slash social. That's my website, IGDM. There's also Stay Focused which you can block any website. You could also, I block other websites on uh, my iPhone, so I can't go on it at all. It just, it just shows up as blocked. You could easily set that up. So there's, there's abilities to put parameters in your way. And then if anything, um, you know, there's, a, there's another, um, I'll just go over this extremely quick, uh, which essentially is um, airplane mode, okay? 
And this is for me. It's from right around 8 p.m. to about 8 a.m. I'm on airplane mode. My alarm is not my phone. It's, it's Amazon. Uh, and then when, once I'm at work from 8 to 8.30, I am uh, checking email and just doing low activities. 8.30 to 10, I'm prospecting. From 10 to 11, I'm filming these videos. 11 to 12, I'm back on my phone. And by the way, this, my phone, is on airplane mode. 11 to 12, 12 to 1 is lunch. It's not usually an hour, but you know, 11 to 12 is, um, what am I doing there? Oh, I'm checking email, text, and phone calls. So I put my phone back away. My phone's over here, but it's on airplane mode. When it's not on airplane mode, it is on do not disturb. So hope this helps. If you guys have any questions, obviously this is a lot longer review. Um, hopefully this helps a lot because to be honest, it's one of my favorite subjects. He's going to be coming out with a couple more books and there's a lot more people that are getting involved in this. Join the resistance. Please do not give them any more money. Do not give them any more ideas. This is going to become a life it's not even, it's going to be a health crisis for the United States. Younger girls are committing suicide or attempting to commit, commit suicide at higher and higher rates. Guys are becoming alone and they are not finding their path. They're not, they are just lost. So these are young kids. This is where it's affecting them most. The, they need to wake up. And by they, I mean the parents. They have to understand the effects. You know, this is going to be like the smoking of the 50s or the you know, the alcohol, the, I don't know, of the sex of the 70s, which is, well, actually we got AIDS from it and this is an epidemic. We need to have a public outcry of this or crime of the 90s in New York, which is, okay, we have to handle this. There's a lot of, food is another one, but I would say, pick this book up. Have an amazing day. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. If you want to buy it on Amazon, the link is below. Obviously, yes, it's affiliated. I get like, I don't know, 20 cents, but I think Amazon's doing all right that if you want to give your boys some money so we can keep on doing some more uh, book reviews, the other book, which I'll get right now, is, uh, this is actually good. It's called, I, I take off the cover of the book. Uh, it's called Living Beautifully with Uncertainty and Change. Smaller book, but essentially it is uh, really good when it comes to your mindset around we're always seeking pleasure or um, we're always seeking stability. So that's going to be the next book review. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon. Subscribe to the video and leave your comments.